1941, I joined uh, the Royal Air Force, and after being at Bomber Command, I finished up at the Air Ministry in an office with a chap called Kenneth Horn. And uh, one year we wrote 35 consecutive uh, half-hour scripts, and we invented this mythical place called Much Binding in the Marsh, and eventually the BBC let us record it. I joke there is something here, sir. Help me move this boulder, and we'll see what's in the scoop. All right, Madoc, you ready? One, yes. two, three. Oh, hey. 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 Good morning, sir. Was there something? <laughs> Buster, what on earth are you doing now? Well, it's a long story, sir. Pull up a chaise long. See, I was in the scully with Mrs. Larkin, and she said, where does that door lead to? Well, I wasn't sure, so I opened it, and there was a long, winding passage. Yes, Costa. Well, I went along, and the passage got narrower and narrower. Yes, Costa. Then I went a bit further, and I heard an eerie noise. What was it, Costa? My moustache rubbing against the walls. <laughs> when we were stuck for something to write about, we used to get up a concert and ask everyone to bring a piece. And my piece usually consisted of some words, nonsense words, put to a well-known piece of music. Uh, something like this, for instance. My aunt's name is Eloila Waterbutton. She lives down at Burton on Trent. When she goes out shopping on a bicycle, she always gets her handlebars bent. Late night final, pick another winner out and win a little money on a football pool. Climbing up Mount Popper get a pedal is a little bit of a avoid morning school. Sabotage at pool in Dorset, camouflage. My uncle's corset, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and <coughs> the rest of the week. Plastic pyjamas is never quite what they ought to be. Gentlemen farmers are never quite what they're taught to be. Seventeen fiddles in a second-hand suitcase. Seventeen and putting in a very old fruitcase. Cabinet minister's shop, one of it is his son. I'm out. <laughs> Would you like to hear another of these songs? Well, never mind, you're going to. This one, Nola. Fourpenny buns, a half a crown, and tuppenny buns, a one in eleven. But everything's up, it makes you frown. Caraway seeds, a seven for seven. Sparrings at all, be said to me last Saturday night in front of a pelican. Eating a lizard is really quite wizard as long as it doesn't get stuck in your gizzard. I have to stop there, partly because it's a very long song, and partly to explain that the only person whose name fitted the metre there was Barrington Dalby. He was the man who used to do the inter-round commentaries at the boxing matches. And every time I sang this on the radio, I used to get a postcard from Barry saying, thanks for the plug. <laughs> Off we go again. American cloth is twice the price it used to be when I covered an ottoman. Nevertheless, it's rather nice. You have to admit, it really has got a magnificent sheen in between. Purple and brown and black at the bottom. I never shall get a material better for 15 more breaths. Years ago, I bought a joint of horse meat, served it up with horse meat balls. It was a bit of a shocker, and then I had a plate of vermicelli, laced with raspberry jelly, it nearly sent me clean off my rocker. And then I took my mother to the ice show, it was quite a nice show, but she slipped and fell on a funny bone. You'll agree, surely with me, we must keep off the ice on Thursdays. Money for tawny soup is good, especially when it's full of ammonia. Nevertheless, a Christmas pool is not a good place to plant a begonia. Padding the bars is where I learned to swim on my back while chewing a peppermint. That's the end of my song, and I think it's about time to. Yeah. Yes, I was saying uh, the most exciting thing that happened was when we, Kenneth and I, were invited to Windsor Castle to entertain at the staff dance. And I had the good fortune to dance with Princess Margaret. And I'd heard that she was a much binding fan, so I asked if she'd like to come to see one of the broadcasts, and she said she would. Later on, when we were talking to the Queen, she said she'd like to come too. So we wrote to the Queen's secretary, told him when the broadcasts were. And a few days later, the phone went at my home, and the Daily answered it and came up to my wife and said, it's a lady in waiting from Buckingham Palace. Well, my wife thought, obviously, it was Kenneth Horne, you see, because if ever we <laughs> rang each other up, we always said, oh, it's the Archbishop of Canterbury speaking. <laughs> Anyhow, it was, and so I wasn't in. She put him on to Kenneth Horne, you see, and she said to Kenneth, um, the Queen would like to bring a party of ten next Tuesday. 
So Kenneth rang up Leslie Bridgemont, the producer, and said, could you manage 10 extra tickets for next Tuesday? Leslie said, don't be damn silly, of course not, all the tickets have gone out, you see. So Kenneth said, oh, well, in that case, we'll just have to tell the Queen she can't come. <laughs> Well, then it was taken out of our hands, and they did come, and they brought two people we hadn't invited, and that was Princess Elizabeth and Prince Philip, and that's the first time that our present queen had been out in public since Prince Charles was born. Well, we had to amend the script slightly. I don't mean clean it up, because it wasn't that sort of script, but uh, to fit the occasion, and at the time, I used to have a very stupid catchphrase which went, Good old Charlie, you see? <laughs> and we thought we ought to bring this in. So we actually did, and I can show you exactly how we did bring it in, because we've got a recording here of that actual broadcast, and this is how it finished. Much finding in the marsh. Today we're thrilled about this special visit. At much finding in the marsh. It's not an everyday occurrence, is it? I still can't quite believe that this has happened, sir, can you? Quite frankly, I'm so shaken that I haven't got a clue. Perhaps we're dreaming. No, we're not down there. Oh, sir, it's true. I had much finding in the marsh. Say it, Murdoch. But finding in the marsh. Go on, Murdoch. Say it. Say it, Murdoch. Go on, say it. Oh, shall I? Must say it. All right, then. Good old Charlie!